patient, car buyers everywhere. Symptoms? Beaten senseless by new cars averaging over $13,000 and used cars averaging about six. Treatment? Rush them to their Hyundai dealer during Come to Your Senses days. Revive them with six XL models priced under $7,000. Starting as low as $53.95. Prognosis? There's never been a better time to buy a car that makes sense. Hurry! Come to your senses days end soon. So see your Hyundai dealer today. The game Monopoly is back at McDonald's. And oh golly, this is the year to play. People all over will win instantly from over $50 million worth of cash and prizes. More than ever before. Win shopping sprees, vacations, a Coca-Cola. Ooh, tasty. Or maybe one of 500 all-new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supremes. Wow. So do not pass go. Go directly to McDonald's. Play Monopoly. Kristen, I'm doing the books here. Did those kids really eat nine jars of peanut butter last week? No, no, that's a mistake. They only ate seven. Oh, that's more like it. I ate the other two. I was low on vitamin E. <laughs> Brian, what's wrong? Nothing. Brian, I'm a psychology major. When I see people with emotional crises that deeply trouble them, it really makes my day. <laughs> Come on. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't. No, really. I'm interested. I, I, I don't know where to begin. I, I guess it has to do with Kate and me quitting our jobs to run this place. I mean, for the first time in my life, there isn't a regular paycheck coming in. And I look at our expenses and it's pretty scary. I mean, my kids are depending on me, and what's more, other people's children are depending on me. And, and what if I can't pay the bills? Like, it keeps me up at night. I don't know, Kristen, what do you think? Am I crazy? <laughs> Kristen? You're perfectly normal. We all have these feelings. <laughs> Thanks for listening, Kristen. I'm here for you. <laughs> Eight jars of paste, eleven dollars and twenty cents. Twelve sets of finger paints, seventy-two dollars and eighty-one cents. Professional rug shampooing, eighty-five dollars and sixty-four cents. Goodbye. Why don't you go in the kitchen and surprise Kristen? Goodbye. Hi, Dad. Modeling clay is not cheap. Thanks, Dad. That'll be my thought for the day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ross. I, I'm just doing the preschool's books here. Dad, you mind if I use this record player? No, oh, man. Some music would be nice. Hi, this is Plus Plus, the edition's called. And we're going to learn to air. Two plus two is four. <laughs> I think I've proved my point. Oh, Ross, don't have a point. It's always so exhausting. <laughs> My point is that these little sprites are forced to listen to a four-inch speaker with, full of distortion with no woofers or tweeters. No wonder they're stuffing their fat little faces. Nothing else brings them joy. Ross, what do you want? A compact disc player. No. Morning, Ross. Morning, Mother. You look smashing. What a healthy shock of red hair you've got. No, you can't have a compact disc player. Ah, how'd you know? He pinned a note to Emily's diaper. Mama, give Ross a CD player and I'll never spit up again. Ross, when we opened this place, we all knew that we would be giving up certain material luxuries. Where was I during this decision? <laughs> I've never told anything. I feel like Congress. <laughs> would you do us a favor and feed Emily? All right, fine. But listening to non-stereo sound is going to warp your baby. <laughs> Emily, one of your little ears will probably grow faster than the other one and you'll never date. Kate, the books don't look good. We're not breaking even. I don't understand. Hasn't our income been meeting our outcome? Outlays. Don't get smart with me. I'm sorry, but you have not been collecting from all of our customers. Brian, a lot of our parents can barely afford to pay. What am I supposed to do? Send home little invoices with their macaroni sculptures? All right, well, what about Mel Schramm? Now, he's three weeks overdue, and yet he's got enough money to keep him and little buddy in matching velour running suits. Do you realize how much static electricity he brings into this house? Okay, you make them pay. Fine. I was a stockbroker. 
I could squeeze blood from a stone. <laughs> oh, look, honey, the stones are here. <laughs> oh, little shock there, huh? Ground <laughs> yourself, buddy. <laughs> How are you today? Peanut butter. I want peanut butter. <laughs> no, no. That kid of mine, he eats like a horse. <laughs> yeah, he takes after his mother. Yeah, we're divorced now, of course. She ran off with her dermatologist. I'm sorry. You know, Mel... You know, I don't know where I'd be without you guys. I mean, you're the greatest. <laughs> so, what did you want to talk to me about? Gee, you can wait. <laughs> well, our money problems are over. Beans, rice, and acorns. <laughs> I see. We're switching to a barter system. Come on. Instead of spending all that money on expensive toys, we can give the children these simple objects to play with and let them use their imagination. Wouldn't that be cheap? I could have told you this preschool would lead our family to financial ruin. Next thing I know, you two will be selling me to a circus. Ross, just out of curiosity, exactly what skills of yours would a circus be particularly interested in? I can pop a wheelie and I'm sweet. Both of those are exploitable. <laughs> what a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the Dow's up 40, and I got a car upgrade. <laughs> what kind of car did you get? A Maserati. It tells me to fasten my seatbelt in Italian. <laughs> Cintura di sicurezza. Oh, I feel as though I've gone to Venice and picked up a new boyfriend. <laughs> Actually, I did that once, and this feels better. Well, we're still happy with our same old clunky cars. Thank you very much. Now, lighten up, Mr. Green James. <laughs> what is this? Ledger, calculator, rice, beans? Brian, you have gotten into commodities. <laughs> we're having a little trouble making ends meet, Eileen. I have the solution to your problem. I could throw a few customers your way. You could work for the firm on a part-time basis. Yes. <laughs> well, Eileen, I, I don't know. Oh, you never know. I'll work on Kate. Now, Eileen, now listen, listen to me. If Brian goes back to work, I see big things. Daycare franchises from here to Topeka. Kate and Brian Harper, baby bibs. The infusion of capital could turn this dingy daycare center into Fort Knox with party seats. Oh, I'm on a roll here. Eileen, I thought you stopped taking those diet pills. Oh, I love them. I think Eileen has a point here. It would be a way to keep our school open. Just a little part-time work. You wouldn't have to compromise your values. Oh, yes, you would. <laughs> Brian, listen, I promise you, once you've gotten your big toe wet, before you know it, you'll be wet all over. I know I am. <laughs> well, Eileen, I appreciate your enthusiasm. And I'll do it, but only part-time. I gave up being a stockbroker for a reason. I wanted to simplify my life, spend more time with my family, watch my babies grow up. Get back to my values. And now that I've done it, Eileen, I've got to tell you, I know I've made a good choice. I can't turn back now. Can you understand that? Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. I wasn't listening. <laughs> you see, Molly, tying your shoe can be fun if you turn it into a game. Watch this. Mr. and Ms. Shoelace are at a square dance. Here they go! Swing your partner round and round, up and over, there we go! Can you just tie the shoe, please? Hi, Kristen. Hi, Roz. Want to try a natural snack? Well, Kristen, you're looking especially great today. It is so nice to get a compliment from someone when there's absolutely no sexual component. Yeah. Well, that is nifty. Yeah. Have some more? Oh, sure. Mm. Mm. You can almost taste the fungus. <laughs> Excuse me. Great stuff. 
Nacho. The name of their product is Instant Lunch. Need I say more? <laughs> okay, everybody put on your imagination cap because we're going to play make-believe with some new toys. Beans, <laughs> rice, and acorns. Donuts! <laughs> but she won't tie itself. Oh. Now, Molly, what are you going to tell your mommy and daddy? Consolidated digit systems recommend to buy and accumulate. <laughs> I'll tie you for free anymore. Mmm, <laughs> this stuff is delicious. Uh, Kristen, you're eating the toys. <laughs> toys? These are beans. Well, I don't know, with a little imagination, they could be soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, it's time to set up the puppet stage. Sick. Eileen, hi. Hi, Brian. I want to introduce you to Joe Snyder. Hi, Joe. Brian Harper. Mm -hmm. Morning. Joe is one of our biggest and best customers. Uh, really? What business are you in? No, no, no. I'm, I'm retired. I have no interests, no hobbies. All I want to do is make money. <laughs> Isn't he precious? <laughs> honey, honey, I could use your help. He is looking for someone to manage his portfolio. Are you free for a nibble? Oh, you bet. Great. Uh, let's hold that nibble. You're not free for lunch. This is important, honey. Well, so is Puppet Theater. You're supposed to play the rooster. Well, Kristen can play the rooster. Last time we let her do that, the rooster psychoanalyzed the crow, and the crow committed suicide. <laughs> uh, let's hop on the chuck wagon and save our receipts. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is important, too. We'll be fine. Thanks, honey. Dad, Whew. next time, let's rent a forklift. A lamp! Whoops. What's that smell? It smells like something died over here. It's over here. Wait, it's your shirt. Presenting Surf Detergent, now available in liquid. Surf not only washes out dirt, it washes out tough odors, too. Looks clean, huh? Yeah. It smells okay, too. Can somebody <laughs> help me move this piano? Now in powder and liquid, Surf removes the dirt and the odors. The comedies on NBC will blow you away. Very impressive. Starting with Al, the extraterrestrial bozo. Even clowns have needs. I need a woman. All about the laughter and love on Valerie's family. Great show, huh? Don't get me started. Join all the fun with Alf and Valerie's family Monday. Yes, I'm looking for Brian Harper. Oh, okay. Well, is Eileen Swift there? Oh, you're a temp. Well, let's see. Uh, she's a brunette, lots of shoes, Maserati. Not back yet, thank you. <laughs> Whoa, Mom, 10 yards for inappropriate snack time. <laughs> you always tell me not to eat before dinner. Do I sense a double standard in the making? Oh, this is historic. I'm just having a little taste. <laughs> Do you feel that your eating is in any way a reflection of inadequacy? Where'd you get that? From Kristen. I've been listening to her lately. I used to just stare. <laughs> Ross, when I want to be psychoanalyzed, I'll let you know. I'll lie on the sofa and scream. That will be our little sign. Fair enough. But emotional stress is taking its toll on you. 
Dad's gone and you're alone, drowning your neuroses and spumoni. I saw an after-school special about this. It was called My Mom's a Fatso. <laughs> Ross, you're making me mad. See, stress. Now I have to ask myself, what can bring this family back together again? The answer comes loud and clear, the gift of music. Ross, I've said no to a CD player before. What made you think this would be any different? I don't know, you seemed weaker now. <laughs> Hi, honey. Where were you? Why didn't you call? Well, I tried calling from Joe's car, but we were on the same frequency as the car in front of us. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I. I thought we told Ross not to eat before dinner. Well, I can't discipline him alone, Brian. <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry, but one thing led to another, you know? We had a wonderful meeting, and we went back to Eileen's office, and we played racquetball. Racquetball? Yeah, I won. <laughs> that must have been a moment of triumph, beating a 70-year-old man. No. I beat Eileen. This is a first. Brian, you left me in the lurch all afternoon. I had to handle everything by myself. Took a half hour alone convincing Kristen she couldn't play the rooster. So who played the rooster? Little buddy Schramm. Actually had a very interesting interpretation of the role. Did he try to psychoanalyze the crow? No. He ate the crow. <laughs> down the house. Oh. oh, God, I wish I'd been there to see it. You know, all afternoon while I was with Eileen and Joe, I kept wondering what you and the kids were up to. Oh, I really missed you, too. Oh, I'm sorry I snapped at you. I'm just a lot to handle by myself. Well, I promise it won't happen again. Well, Brian, you kicked some fanny today. <laughs> Kate, I just talked to Joe. All he could talk about was Brian and money, money and Brian. Brian and money. The two words are practically interchangeable. <laughs> anyway, listen, Brian. Clear your plate for tomorrow. He wants to see you at 10.30. I'm sorry, Eileen. I really got to be here tomorrow morning. What? Are you afraid you're going to miss a Kodak moment? <laughs> if Joe wants to see me, he can come over here. Thank you, honey. That means a lot to me. Wait a minute. This is all coming together for me. You're going to look like a real family man. <gasps> what a fabulous scam. <laughs> this is a very exciting growth company, Joe. Oh. What do they make? Well, you know the uh, little wood thingies they put in your steak that say rare, medium, or well done? Uh -huh. Kristen, it's time for juice and crackers. No, thanks. I just had some birch bark. <laughs> No, I meant for the kids. What planet am I on today? <sighs> this always happens when I stay up late with my loom. Oh, uh, same here. <laughs> what are you weaving? Seat covers for my boyfriend's car. They're going to be very special. I got the yarn by unraveling a 14th century Persian prayer shawl. <laughs> okay, kids. Chris is going to read us all a story. Yeah! Kate. Okay. My psychology professor, Ms. Green, recommended this book to me. It's designed to break down traditional stereotype sex roles. Lovely, the kids have been begging to do that all week. <laughs> okay, everyone. The name of our story is Big Blue Riding Hood and the Mean, Mean She-Wolf. <laughs> Once upon a time, Big Blue Riding Hood left his office where he worked as a male nurse to a strong female doctor. That's a vast story. Read Denny in the Dump Truck. Yeah, Denny the Dump Truck. Denny, Denny the, the Dump Truck. truck. Denny, Denny the Dump Truck. truck. I don't want to read that dopey book. <laughs> Maybe we're just a little ahead of our time. Brian, read us a story, please. Justin, Brian's doing his other work now. Brian! 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 If you don't mind, Joe, I, I missed most of yesterday with these kids. Well, we've got a lot of work to do, Brian. Well, I, I know, but it would mean a lot to them and to me. And, and it's just a story. Well, is it a long story? <laughs> no, and it's a good story, too. It's about a dump truck. You'll love it. Come on. Oh, Once upon a time, there was a little red dump truck named Denny. Yeah! All the 
Big dump trucks made fun of Denny because he was little and couldn't carry big loads. They laughed at Denny and called him names. <laughs> then one night, it started to rain. And it rained and rained and rained and rained. And rained and rained and rained. Well, that's a great story. <laughs> it's not quite over yet, Joe. <laughs> the big dump trucks got stuck in the mud. But Denny was so little and so light that he picked up all the garbage in town. <laughs> And the mayor gave Denny a big can of motor oil, the end. No! And that was a humdinger. Let's get back to work. Read us another story. Maybe just one more. Brian, this is crazy. I'm a busy man. I know, Joe, but it's story time. You have got a job to do, son. You, but this is my job, too. That's not a job. Let your wife do it. Brian. <laughs> Your wife has her angry face on? <laughs> this is a job, Joe, and it's a very hard one. The hell it is. Joe, there are kids here. I don't care if there are giraffes here. <laughs> I am paying you. That's not the point. That is the point. Stop acting like an idiot. We need to stop calling me an idiot. What do you say? I said we need to stop calling me an idiot and we need to stop putting down what my wife and I are trying to do. Now listen. You... Now you listen. You know one of the first things we taught these children? To wait their turn. And that's what you've got to do, Joe. <laughs> you've got to learn to wait your turn. Do you think you can do that? You know, Brian, in all my years as a private investor, no one ever quite had the guts to say to me what you just said. You're fired. Well, I just got off the phone with Eileen. Oh, how's she doing? Well, the crying jag is over. <laughs> Sitting in her Maserati perked her up. <laughs> Apparently, the car is capable of singing Volare. <laughs> How are you? Well, I never thought I would say this, but I feel great. Quitting being a stockbroker is even more fun the second time. <laughs> kind of surprised. You seem to be enjoying it. That was the manic behavior of a very deeply frightened individual. Frightened? Yeah. Well, I'm going up to bed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't tell me you were frightened and then leave me hanging. What were you scared of? <laughs> Well, you know how the last couple of months, you know, I've been getting up at night and pacing around the house and how I couldn't go back to sleep? Yeah, you told me it was my cooking. I've been worried about money, Kate. I mean, we have two kids that we've got to feed and clothe and send to college. Quitting our jobs was all very well for us, but what about them? Aren't you ever scared? I'm petrified. Me too. God, I feel better already. Why didn't we talk about this before? Who couldn't find you? You were pacing around the house. Oh, Brian, we used to have money and a lot of security, but we never saw each other. It wasn't such a great deal. Yeah, I guess if we're going to be scared, at least we'll be scared together. Well, that's what marriage is about. Togetherness and fear. <laughs> anyway, I guess we're going to have to find another way to make some extra money. I was thinking maybe I could do consulting work for Eileen, you know, at home in my spare time. You wouldn't miss racquetball? Well, I could play with you. But I'm terrible. That's what appeals to me. <laughs> All right, music lovers. Feast your ears. Compact discs. Def Leppard, Rat, and Motley Crue. I hear the CD versions really bring out their subtleties. <laughs> well, I'm afraid the old CD player is going to have to wait. I'm only going to be doing some consulting work for Eileen. When did this happen? We just decided. Are you sure? Oh, it's official, Ross. Wait a minute. I've got it. Mom can get a job. She wouldn't have to go back to being a lawyer. She could, uh, she could be a nurse. She's a very caring person. She looks great and white. What could be better? Ross, I've got a great idea. Hit me. You could get a job. Night, night. Sleep tight. <laughs>
The new Volkswagen Fox is a lot of car for the money. For instance, a powerful 1.8-liter fuel-injected engine is standard. So are power front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, and four-wheel independent suspension. Now, we could have done what some did, cut the standard features and offered less car for less money. But we'd never pull a stunt like that. That isn't the Volkswagen way. 1988 Fox, only 62.90. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's it. It's over. We have nothing in common. Never agreed on one thing, ever. Great. I'm too good for him. I can do better. I need to find someone. More like me. When you find something you have so much in common with, something so unique, so refreshing, Hi. Hi. you just can't stop yourself from grabbing it and holding on to it forever. Revlon faces aren't afraid to get close. Not this close, or even this close. Revlon's created new complexion makeup, virtually undetectable. It perfects like never before, so close-ups never look made up. Next, Jason Robards, Jane Alexander, and Rob Lowe star in Home is Where the Heart Is. And Wednesday, it's three great dramas starting with Aaron's Way. Then the group at St. Elsewhere is putting together six. That's six new episodes starting this week, followed by The Bronx Zoo, Wednesday. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. You never know when people are going to take advantage of your children when you're in jail. <laughs> and it hurts. Women Behind Bars. Maria Shriver reports Tuesday. This is NBC News Digest. Here is Garrett Utley, NBC News. Good evening. NBC News has been told Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir was so happy at the success of the assassination yesterday of PLO leader Abu Juhad in Tunis, he sent a message congratulating Israeli troops. In response to Palestinian riots over that killing, Israeli soldiers today sealed off the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip. Presidential candidate Michael Dukakis today was the winner in the Democratic presidential caucuses in Arizona, and the Transportation Department says it will launch an intensive investigation of safety practices at Continental Airlines. I'm Garrett Utley, NBC News in New York. We'll have more news later on this 